Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Dario Son Charles, because today's the 5th of May 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Tuesday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in into the charts, um, quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JD Bank website and specifically our JD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab uh, right there on the top. So it'll take you to this page, which uh, I believe you can find useful. Um, now then, uh, also quickly, let's have a quick update here on the figure, on the global figure. Now the big question here, has UK overcame Italy now in terms of deaths? Now this is, let's quickly have a look at that. Um, so, um, oh, I can see that they have managed to finally put the, the figure here. So, uh, the, the total amount of deaths in the U S, uh, so now you don't need to click on just the U S. So, um, okay. So yeah, of course U S is leading the way, um, probably not something that you would like to lead, but yeah, uh, as always, yeah. So basically, uh, for now we can see that the situation here is not the best, um, the country is still well. the 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 amount of the, the amount of infections continue to, continues to grow. Um, however, it's on the slower side. So, yep, let's con continue monitoring that. Let's uh, in terms of daily daily cases, uh, as you can see, is starting to slide again. Uh, but as you can see that they kind of tend to move lately as uh, sinus cosinus here. So yeah, we let's see how all this develops. Um, now then let's jump into the chart. Uh, so um, looking at this picture here, um, we can see that DAX yesterday kind of ended the day uh, just kind of oscillating around the 21 uh, uh, 21 day EMA um, or, and uh, for now basically well a long story short basically for now we cannot really do anything here until it's kind of stuck here in this little range um, now <clears throat> I'm keeping this as a little range here because Yes, although we did have a, a a break here to the upside, and then kind of after a couple of days, it just reversed back down. So um, this on Monday, it kind of opened here with a nice gap to the downside. So basically, for now, uh, in order for us, let's say, to consider, uh, let's say, a further uh, short-term directional move. Um, uh, if we get a break of the this barrier here, the 10,280 10, uh, zone, then yes, uh, we will aim for lower levels. Basically, the same scenario remains in uh, in place uh, as I've mentioned la uh, yesterday. So we just need a clear break through one of these levels before considering a further directional move. Um, in addition to the downside here, um, if we get a break below the 10,280 zone, <coughs> excuse me. We would also like to see a nice good uh, daily close below the uh, psychological 10,000 zone just for that extra confirmation. Um, in terms of the upside, yep, the same story is still is in place. Uh, the same scenario is still in place, the 10,820. That's what, after a break of which we would start considering higher levels. But again, we'll still be very careful because there are a bunch of uh, strong, strong obstacles here on the way um, higher. 
Now then, FTSE 100. So um, here the situation is um, is also similar. To be honest, I mean we are not we're not doing anything here until we get a breakthrough one of the highlighted areas because again this level here I do understand that this maybe is not an ideal uh, level here and doesn't mark one of these lows, but that's the the 5,500 zone. It's the lowest point of 2016. So um, something to kind of keep in mind, um, if we get a drop below this, then yep, maybe deeper extensions to the downside would be possible. So um, again, uh, for now guys, uh, wait for it. Um, in terms of the upside, we would like to see a push above the 5,895 zone. And uh, then we could also start considering higher levels. Of course, the more comfortable level for us would be uh, above the 6,152 6, uh, zone, roughly around here. Um, and then, yes, uh, uh, we could start aiming for higher levels. But uh, we'll start considering, as I said, we'll start considering higher levels if we get a push back above the uh, 5,895 zone. And looking at the cash index right now, the price is currently around 5,830 mark. So basically just um, slightly below this barrier. So let's keep an eye on this one. It could be quite interesting. Um, and by the way, on the DAX, the, the cash index is currently balancing at around 10,600 and uh, Six, 16, 17 zone. So basically, it's above yesterday's close and it's somewhere around here, back above this 21 day EMA. This is what I was uh, telling you guys to keep an eye on yesterday uh, because what I was saying that, um, in a way, if this um, 21 day EMA pr provides decent support, I mean, we could see this one pushing back up. Um, now, then, jumping into Brent Oil, quick update here. Um, so Yesterday, Brent Oil managed to push above this barrier that I talked about. Uh, I've mentioned this one yesterday in my morning video, uh, the uh, 27.18 territory. So it pushed it pushed higher. It closed the daily candle above it. So good good news. So in a way, it kind of increasing the chances for uh, Brent Oil to move higher here. Uh, we could see this one drifting all the way maybe towards the first. Of course, we will target the uh, that psychological 30 30 mark, um, and then we could start aiming for some of these other levels. Now, um, one of again, it's a little bit difficult here. Probably uh, all these levels here in between. In, in this little territory, uh, will all will all be a little bit more on the uh, let's say tentative side. Uh, what we're going to mainly target here is going to be this thirty six point ten zone because, as you can see, it acted as a very good area of resistance here previously. So and it's also very close to this downside uh, downside line. So uh, yep, for now that's what we're going to do. Um, as long as the price continues to balance above the 27.18 zone, we will stay slightly more on the bullish side because don't forget that overall we are still within a downtrend and this move higher could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. Um, in terms of the downside, if it starts dropping back below the 27.18 zone, uh, we, we could start looking at lower levels if we get a drop below this level, below the 23.20 .20 zone and then then, yep, we could consider deeper extensions to the downside. Now then, Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin is pushing higher again. Uh, looking at this picture, you can see, I'm looking at the Bitfinex exchange, by the way. Um, so it's pushing higher and it's getting close to this um, barrier here uh, near the 9,241, 9, 42 zone, which is the high, uh, the highest point of March. Um, you can see that last week we had a bit of an overshoot here, but still the the crypto closed below it. However, as you can see, what what happened here, and you can see it tested this downside line. Let, let me just show you what what I'm talking about. And for this, I need to jump into a monthly chart. So this is the picture that I'm talking about. Now, uh, last week the pair uh the, the pair the crypto managed to almost test kind of this downside line. Now, don't get me wrong, 
both of these lines are a little bit on the tentative side so it's just for illust illustrative purposes don't focus too much on these lines because uh, what I wanted to show here is that the, the crypto might be coiling up now of course don't get me wrong we are seeing a push higher right now uh, this month uh, and uh, the big question can it overcome this uh, this downside line here um, if it cannot then well I mean we could see this one moving back down here and basically continuing to coil up until we see a clear strong move out of this pair pair but again <clears throat> that's only in the scenario if this uh, this upper side of this, this let's call it a triangle <clears throat> if the upper side of the triangle um, provides a decent resistance for now as long as it remains below it we will yep we'll continue uh, examining that idea uh, but if, if we get eventually a, a break ab above this territory and a, and a close we'll see a monthly close above this this upper side then yep maybe higher levels could be met after that um jumping back into a daily chart and back and going into euro uh, against south african rand i talked about this uh, some of these exotic pairs um, yesterday in my traders tea time if you want to check out that one um, basically there were some more of other pairs what i wanted to show you guys that it if you don't look at these very often probably have a look because they they do present very interesting opportunities now um, here what we can see here uh, from the technical side on the daily chart you can see that the pair is stuck within a range so after this nice rally to the upside here where uh, the South African Rand kind of uh, devalued heavily um, that happened at the end of February when the stock market collapsed as well so um, heavily called kind of correlated um, so the the emerging market currencies to the stock market so um, and the commodity prices as well they've collapsed so yeah uh, for now guys the technical picture says that yeah we should remain neutral um, and wait for a clear break through one of these um, highlighted areas in order to aim for a further directional move now in from the fundamental side um, if commodities start recovering, um, and if commodities start recovering, then we might see some interest in the, we, uh, in the emerging markets again. So uh, basically, given that they're uh, at their lows right now, uh, the currencies, the the emerging market uh, indices as well, these might present themselves with nice opportunities. But of course, don't get me wrong, this is a bit too early to well not it's a little bit early to talk about that first we need some confirmation um, but uh, again something to keep in mind something to consider guys uh, like I said it could be quite interesting and if this pair drifts lower and uh, we see a drop below the 19 point uh, let's round it up to it was 50 if we get a drop below that area somewhere then um, yes uh, we could maybe consider a bit of a deeper decline for now uh, we're watching this carefully and we want to see which way uh, the pair will exit uh, will will exit this range um, AUD USD so here the uh, for now it's working out nicely as I, as I mentioned it yesterday so uh, the pair is rebounding nicely from this 21 day EMA um, so this is what I talked about yesterday and uh, what I was saying that if we if we do see a rebound then yep it increases the chances of for the for AUD USD to travel back up here um, this is exactly what we're going to be doing right now we're going to be targeting this upside however don't get me wrong we will remain very careful and very cautious because this market is uh, a bit of a crazy one so um, yep guys be very careful if you want to be on the safe side here you could just wait for a push above the high of last week which is roughly around the 0 0.6570 zone and then aim for higher levels because this uh, break above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and maybe more buyers could join in so this is kind of the safe uh, safe game um, if you're more on the risky side then yes you could consider uh, an up move here however be very careful have a tight stop loss just in case this reverses back down and it could do that it could in a way travel back down sharply again uh, test the downside line this downside line from above again and then rebound and push higher we've seen this happening several times so that's why we'll try to be very careful guys um, 
in terms of the downside to getting comfortable with lower levels, further lower levels, we would like to see uh, a drop below this territory, below the low of the 21st of April, near the 0 0.6253.54 zone, so roughly around here. And then we could consider deeper extensions to the downside. For now, uh, it seems that the downside is slightly off the table, unless it's a, it's a small correction. But again, for now, like I said, be very careful, guys. Yes, it is presenting itself with a nice opportunity to the upside. However, uh, for those who are more on the cautious side, uh, zero, examine the 0 0.6570 uh, territory. Uh, for those who are more on the risky side, yes, you could start looking at high, higher levels, but, but don't forget that we do have the 100 EMA here. Uh, the pair is approaching that, so we could get a hold up here somewhere. Um, and then maybe, yeah, you could reverse and move higher, uh, move lower again. So that's why be very careful here, guys, if you're looking for something here. We have a, have a tight stop loss. Uh, USD CAD. Now, here... Um yeah, the problem is that it's still stuck in the wide range. Uh, yesterday it pushed higher. It um, it pushed all the way here uh, towards the area around the um, 1.4150 zone, roughly around there. And then you can see that now it reversed back down and it kind of... Uh, formed somewhat of a shooting star here so which could be seen as a reversal signal now um, however we still remain above the 21 day EMA so we'll be very careful and cautious here um, as long as it stays above this 21 day EMA there is more chance for this one uh, uh, to move to towards the upper bound of this range so because for now like I said we are going to be targeting that we are still above the midpoint of this range so uh, there is there are more chances for this one to move higher um, however if it starts dropping back below the 21 day EMA here and we see let's say for example a daily close below this 21 day EMA then well I mean we could maybe see this one drifting back down here towards the lower side of the of the range so for now that's the kind of game plan uh, not much we can do you just uh, continue observing this one GBP JPY so uh, yesterday it closed it it, it, once again, it tested this area uh, near the one point, uh, sorry, 132.44 zone, and uh, yep, it seemed that it could drift lower. However, uh, it, it acted as a very good support zone, uh, and so far for now, we can see that the pair is kind of moving sideways here within this range, roughly between the 132.44 and the 135.75 levels uh, uh, on the downside and on the upside, respectively. So. Um, it's closer now to the lower bound of this range. Um, of course, that means that means that uh, we'll be very carefully monitoring the, this one right now, uh, today, for example, because if it drops below this and we see a daily close below this territory, then well, deeper extensions to the downside could be possible. So something to consider, guys. And finally, Euro USD. Um, this one drifted lower. This is what I talked about yesterday. Uh, something that we don't want to see, but probably we will end up seeing uh, a range here. So uh, a range uh, roughly between the 1.0777 uh, and the 1.0990, so roughly around there. So um, although last week we did have an attempt to overcome this barrier, but as you can see, it acted as a very good area of resistance, and the pair kind of yesterday sold off heavily, uh, but remained above the 21-day EMA. So basically, um, this is what I talked about yesterday as well. What I was saying that if it stays above the 21-day EMA, then... Uh, uh, we could maybe there is a chance for this one to drift back to the upside um, and uh, but for to get a little bit more confident with higher levels we need still need to see a push above this barrier above the 1.0990 so that's why guys for now uh, probably the best uh, way to look at it is to remain neutral because we don't want to get caught up here. Um, if the 21-day EMA continues to provide support, yes, we could see this one drifting a little bit higher. Uh, but if it struggles again to overcome this barrier, the 1.0990, then well, I mean, could drift back down again. So this is, again, we've seen such scenarios happening many times. Um, our oscillators are not really even helping us a lot, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, so for now we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna we'll probably wait. Um, if we see a drop here and we see a daily close below the 21-day EMA, now this is where maybe it could become interesting for the sellers because this could start pushing the 
pair lower um, and we could maybe revisit this 1.0777 level that I keep talking about now uh, this is the uh, the level after a break of which we could get more comfortable with um, with further declines um, for now uh, you can see that the mm, the pair is kind of like I said it's still far away from this territory but as I said if we see it, uh, a daily close below the 21 day EMA here then well I mean maybe we it, there are going to be more chances for this, this one to drift uh, towards the lower side of this little range here so that we've got so keep your eyes on this one I do understand it's, it's to be honest uh, it's not really helping, I would say, even because, again, we are at, at a, such a tricky spot here that um, probably try to find value somewhere else, I would say, because, again, uh, one, if we get closer to one of these highlighted areas, now this is when it could become very interesting, because for now, it's a range. Uh, it could be a range, again, if, if, if this pair drifts lower, so, and then, yep, uh, well, uh, like I said, we'll keep on monitoring these highlighted areas for now. So, guys, I... I hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. So I really appreciate your time, guys. Really thank you for everything. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your views. And uh, yeah, that means a lot to me. So guys, I hope, like I said, you you stay safe. I stay, you stay careful with the market because again, we are at a very interesting moment right now in, in the economy. So, so yeah, uh, be very careful. Um, if you want to catch my video later on, my traders uh, tea time, 13 15 GMT roughly around there um, and uh, yeah we'll, we'll we'll have a look at I'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and then we'll take it from there so yeah have a wonderful trading day guys and I'll see you later thank you very much and bye bye